Photography is a central part of my life. It's my hobby and it's the main focus of my channel here on YouTube. So I feel I have a pretty good handle on where things are at culturally, the gear, visual styles, and then also what's happening in the commercial world. So today I'm gonna share four big photography trends that I see on the rise. past decades, we really favored professional looking images. And that was generally what was expected when you hired someone as a professional photographer. I think due to many factors, we have really started to move away from this. With photography more accessible now through cheap secondhand cameras and high res camera phones, we're seeing a saturation point. I don't think that a technically perfect image is really moving the needle anymore. If anything, this type of photography has started to look very same, same and uncreative. Camera manufacturers are forced to keep upping the specs to higher megapixels so they have a new selling point, but all I see is an increasingly clinical look produced by modern cameras, which is why I think we see so many people adding diffusion and grain and other things to their photos to try and make them look more authentic and real. It's kind of a weird state of push and pull that we've reached. Things like bokeh and shallow depth of field, in my opinion, are really falling out of favor in a lot of niches too. I'm someone who follows photographers who shoot in fashion and fashion campaigns quite closely. And I'm seeing more and more campaigns that are favoring things like out of focus images or motion blur, really heavy grain, or just photos that don't look like they've been shot with the latest and greatest gear. And they're not those photos that we used to see from the big fashion brands that are perfectly lit and, you know, really well executed, which I'm not saying we can't do anymore, but I just think that because we've hit this saturation point and we're trying to get people's attention, especially in the commercial world, people are pro probably turning to things that are more unconventional in order to break the circuit a little bit and get people's attention. Something that proves this theory is a conversation I had with a fashion photographer in LA who will go unnamed. And he said that when he's shooting, he is even getting asked for iPhone 5 photos. So to actually shoot a campaign or shoot with a model and take photos on something really old like an iPhone 5 to get that look. And we've seen this become popular with older digital cameras, but I was kind of really surprised when I heard that because I was like, who would want an iPhone 5 photo? But apparently that's what some people want. Perhaps the iPhone has been around for long enough now that those early iPhone photos are nostalgic for some people. And I guess this is just <laughs> me realizing how old I am and us having to accept that, you know, things we've lived through will come back into style because trends are circulating at a much higher rate than they used to. And we are being ever more nostalgic for simpler times and iPhone 5 does seem kind of like a simpler time. We saw film increase hugely in popularity in the recent years, especially amongst young people. Whilst there is still very much a community of people who live and die by analog, I think that we will see and are seeing the casuals drop off a lot. I am very much plugged into the analog community, being a film shooter for a long time. I have conversations with people online regularly, and I have noticed that this year, people are embracing the hybrid lifestyle a lot more. So photographers that have solely shot film for many, many, many years and would much prefer to do that are now saying things to me like, oh yeah, I'm looking for a digital option and kind of embracing that, shooting a little bit of both and definitely shooting less film. I think this is due to cost because film has gone up, but then everything else in life has also gone up. There are also factors like time and efficiency. I think we are all increasingly kind of time poor and shooting film, whether it's you developing at home on your own or you're sending it away and that's another added expense. You're trying to finish off a roll so that you can see the photos and get that result back that motivates you to keep creating. I just don't think that we have the luxury of that time as much as we maybe used to because everything is expensive. So maybe we're working more. All these things in the economy have such a knock-on effect and do really affect our creativity. I think when most of us are struggling to make ends meet, 
film will continue to see a little bit of a decline. In the commercial world, however, I think it is more popular than ever, probably when there's a budget to be thrown around or you're already spending thousands of dollars, it doesn't really make a difference to then add on some more for film. And unrelated to photography, we do see it being used in movies a lot more lately. And I know that that has a direct correlation to then the uh, offshoot of photographers being able to use film. So in the commercial world, I think we will continue to see it being very embraced. But for the everyday person like you and me, I think it might be becoming a little bit too expensive. I know that I have reduced how much film I'm shooting this year significantly and opting for things like my (music) XE1. Fortunately, these days, a beautiful image just doesn't hold the same impact as it used to because we are seeing so many images every day. For better or worse, if you want to stand out and get any kind of engagement, you really need to be telling a story with your images. This can be done, of course, through the actual photos themselves or through some supporting writing like your caption or it can be done with sort of like a multimedia approach. So there's a few ways to come at this. I think that we should see this as a positive because it opens up a lot of creativity and ultimately photography is about telling stories. We want to give people something to connect with and access. So context is really key here when you are creating images. Putting some kind of narrative into your work is a great way to tell a story, obviously. So next time you go out on a hike to get to a spot to take that beautiful sunrise or sunset landscape photo that's really breathtaking instead of just relying on that one beautiful image that years ago might have had a better impact and more engagement try documenting the road to get there literally what were the other moments what are the other things that are happening how can you stitch together a story here that can visually take us on the journey with you to this beautiful image Another option here is turning to something like Substack, which we are seeing a lot of photographers jump over to. This allows you to tell a story with writing about your photos and pepper them in like your own little article. Another great example here is when I do photography for fashion brands. Say I am photographing a bag. I'm looking at it more than just a bag. What's the story here? What's the story of the winter collection and this color? What are the things I'm going to put in the bag? Where am I going to take the bag? And then I'm going to kind of storyboard out a selection of activities and things that will evoke feelings and emotions and act to tell a story through the photos of this bag. So it's no longer just a bag. It's going somewhere. It's doing things. It's interesting. And it's more interesting for the people who are viewing it. You'll likely find that this will be more exciting for you as well. And I guarantee you, you'll get a lot more engagement if you can apply any kind of storytelling element to your work. So have a think about how you can start implementing that now in your creative work and in your images and get ahead. If you're a photographer looking for an easy online booking system or a way to schedule appointments with people, then I have the perfect time-saving tool for you. Acuity Scheduling is an easy online booking tool that offers you a full suite of features to make you look and feel like the professional that you are. It makes managing your clients and customers so much easier. Picture this, you are back and forth with someone about a potential shoot, trying to find a time that suits and get them to book in, take payments, all that kind of stuff. Well, you could cut that workload in half and have Acuity Scheduling take care of all of it for you. Simply send a link directly to your booking page and have your clients see your available times. You can block off when you are busy and then add handy things like an intake form that allow you to gather the info you need from clients to better serve them. You can customize, of course, by changing the fonts and colors too, so it all feels really on brand. You can easily receive payments too, and Acuity links up with all the popular payment types like PayPal, Stripe, and Square. It's an all-in-one service, and it integrates beautifully with my or your Squarespace website too. So if you want to get serious about your side hustle, passion project, or business this year, then I would highly recommend using Acuity Scheduling. If you want to learn more or give it a go yourself, you can head to acuityscheduling.com forward slash Lucy Lumen for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the code Lucy Lumen 20 to save 20% off your first Acuity Scheduling subscription. I think that 
that you'll probably see Instagram or whatever photo sharing app is popular at the time as a native app within your camera. I think we will see the amalgamation of these two things in cameras in the next couple of years for sure, or at least the line between cameras and social media will have a lot less friction. I also think that the obsession with high resolution will become a bit on the nose and just irritate everyone with these huge file sizes that no one really needs. I think this will become annoying and impractical. For example, at the time of filming this video, Fujifilm is set to release a half frame camera with a vertical sensor that looks like it will be optimized for social media users. Looks vintage. It's just ticking all the boxes of a modern use case. And I think we will start to see cameras that do that and have given thought to how people are actually applying image making and video footage in real life and how that's ending up on the other end. And I think, you know, for better or worse, that will be skewed heavily towards it being shared online on social media. Basically, I think whatever camera company puts user experience front and center and really looks at that as being the priority over things like file size and just unnecessary features that no one asked for and no one wants will reign supreme and sell out. Using myself as an example, I would really like an X106 like the rest of the world. It would be great because of, you know, being able to do video with it as well and built in things like IBIS and having an ND filter. Lots of features are, you know, very appealing to me in wanting to buy that camera but it puts me off because the file sizes are so big. And I just know that that would be really annoying and spending that much money on something. You really want it to be ticking all of the boxes and making your life easier. Most of my photos are going to be posted on social media anyway, in like two megapixels. Obviously they'll go on my website and, you know, if I'm lucky, they might be printed by a client or something like that for a poster or a lookbook, but generally they're going online and I just do not need that many megapixels. Let me know below how you feel about the whole megapixel obsession from camera companies. Is this something you feel you need or has enhanced your photography experience? Let me know. I would love to know. So there you go. Those are my trend predictions at the moment. We're nearly halfway through 2025 and it's always exciting to forecast what we think is going to happen. And I would love to hear what you guys think is coming culturally on social media in terms of gear, what you're seeing clients and customers ask for if you're a working photographer, drop them below. I would love to chat to you guys about it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.